Hi, I'm Roxanne Richardson, and this is Technique Tuesday. When you get a hole in your knitting, it can be a little scary because knitted fabric, uh, every stitch of knitted fabric is attached to the stitch above it. So all of the stitches in a column are connected and all of the stitches in a row are connected. So when you get a hole, that hole can end up getting bigger and bigger in all directions. So you really wanna to stop that and find a way to repair it. A lot of different ways of repairing holes, um, either with visible means or invisible means or nearly invisible means. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you one that sort of runs that line between being visible and invisible. It's a method of patching fabric. So if you have a hole like this, you can make a patch over it that is attached to the fabric as you're knitting it. So you're gonna pick up stitches at the base and then as you're knitting this patch, you will be attaching it uh, at the sides. And then when you get to the very top, you will be taking those live stitches and attaching them again to the existing fabric um, by grafting them. It's fairly invisible on three of the edge, edges, but is slightly visible at the base. At the end of the video, I will show you a way to make that invisible at the base in terms of making the original stitches that are adjacent to the patch look exact, exactly like they had originally. That method doesn't work for all patching situations. The method that I am going to show you today is the easiest method to get started, but it is also a method that will work in every situation, whether you are patching something that's in a visible location or a place where nobody is going to ever see it. You wanna evaluate your hole before you get started. This one is a fairly small hole. I don't, it's not really wide. There aren't a lot of long strands of yarn, yarn in the way. If you do, you, you might wanna trim that up so that you don't have a lot of hanging strands. Uh, you may need to secure the edges. You can either sew it down. If you have needle felting uh, tools, you could needle felt around the edge just to secure things while you are working on the patch and so that it doesn't continue to get bigger. The next thing you need to do is evaluate how big you actually want to make this patch. I'm thinking that I want to go about this wide. I want to have two full columns of stitches outside of the hole on either side and a couple of rows below it. If I, I wanna start about, I think right here. So one, I'm gonna pick up, use a thin a needle to pick up the right leg of each of these stitches. Four, five, six, seven. Now that we've established where the beginning row is going to be, we need to establish where the final row is going to be. So we want something that's eight rows long. So we're gonna count this as row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So th this will be the final row. So I'm gonna take a, a piece of yarn and I'm going to define that uh, row above that eighth row so that I will know when to stop. when you're planning what yarn you're going to use for your patch. If you don't have any of the original yarn and you make, need to make a substitution, you want to use a yarn that is the same yarn weight, that is something that's the same thickness, preferably the same fiber content, and the needles that you will need to get the same gauge so that you can match stitch for stitch and row for row as you are creating this patch. Because this patch is attached as you go, you need to plan for the amount of yarn that will be needed because it will have to be cut from the ball of yarn, threaded onto a yarn needle and attached on each side as you're going. So let's look at how to calculate the amount of yarn that you will need. There's a well-known way of estimating the amount of yarn that it takes to knit 
an entire row in stockinette. And that is, however wide that row of stitches is, you need three times that much yarn in order to, to knit the row. So what we wanna do is calculate the number of stitches that we're going to have in our patch and then pretend that they were all in a single row of knitting, figure out how wide that row of knitting would be and then multiply it by three. So I've got a little worksheet here and I will attach a link down in the video description where you can get this worksheet if you need it. So we have decided that our patch is going to be uh, seven stitches wide and the number of rows that we're going to have is eight. So that means that we are going to have 56 stitches in our patch. The stitch gauge that I have is 4.5 stitches per inch which is the same as 1.8 uh, stitches per centimeter. So if we put all 56 of those stitches in a row and we divide by our stitch gauge, that tells us how wide the fabric would be that had 56 stitches. So 56 divided by 4.5 is about 12.5 uh, uh, inches. And 56 divided by 1.8 is equal to about 31 centimeters. So the amount of yarn that we are going to need just to knit the stitches in the patch is three times uh, these. So we would either need about uh, 37 uh, inches worth of yarn or we would need 93 uh, centimeters of yarn um, depending on it, uh, which system we're working in. Then you need to add some yarn for your yarn tail at either end, like four to six inches. So you want to have more than you need, but you don't want to have too much more than you need. This is the, the first stitch I want to knit. I want my yarn to come uh, right here, right, uh, right next to it. So I'm going to just attach my yarn here and come up through that hole there. Pull it so that I still have some tail uh, and I'm not going to lose it. So now I'm ready to work across my first row. So I'm holding the yarn in my left hand. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, that's absolutely fine. We're going to knit through this leg of the stitch that's sitting over the front of the needle. So I've knit across my first row uh, and now I want to attach the yarn to the fabric. So I want to attach it to the left of this column of stitch and stitches right here. So I'm going to go down through the fabric right here and then up to so that I have two strands of yarn on the needle and that will attach it to the fabric. And then I'm going to turn the work and I'm going to purl backwards. If you can knit backwards, you can do that so you don't have to turn the work, uh, but otherwise turn the work and purl back in the other direction. Now we're back over here and we're going to um, pick up our yarn needle and we're going to look at where the yarn came up through the fabric before. We're going to go down through there and then back up so that again we have two strands on, uh, on top of the needle. So at this point we have worked two rows uh, and what, but what we can see under the needle is that we have those stitches that we picked up in the original fabric and then we have a row of green below that. So that's our two rows and we're going to work until we are two rows short of the total length that we want for our patch. I want an eight row patch so I'm going to work six rows all together. So I've worked two four, so far, I need to work four more rows.
Once again, I'm going to go down where the yarn came up before, catch two running threads, and then go up. By catching the running threads as we're going, we don't get that stockinette edge that we would normally get, like we would over here where you have something that looks like a stitch and then a knot and a stitch and a, and a knot. We don't get that because the stitches aren't twisting on themselves. We've got some yarn attached to the fabric, so we get a nice selvage. Okay, I have finished my six rows. I can confirm that by counting uh, everything below the needle, including that twisted row, or I can do it by counting all of the dark green stitches. Uh, that's the same thing. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six rows done. And the reason we're stopping two rows early is because as we graft these stitches to the fabric, these live stitches on the needle will become a row and the thread we're using to graft is going to become a row of stitches. And this line is helping us know where, what stitch we're grafting to on the surface. So the first thing we need to do though is attach uh, to the fabric like we've been doing. So we come under uh, two rows like that, pull it through. To get this first stitch grafted, we're going to come through as if to purl on here. And then to attach it to the fabric, we're, we're looking at this first stitch that's under our marker line. And we, we can see that stitch right here. We're gonna come behind it like this to create um, the head of that stitch there. Now we can come back through this uh, stitch here and as if to knit and let it off the needle. And that does our, and that's our first stitch. So we can do this for every stitch from then on. We come in as if to purl. The first time. And then we come up here, we come around the back of that stitch Retracing, we've got this leg of the stitch, that leg of the stitch, and then what connects them is this head right here, and that's what we are creating with our dark green yarn. And then when we come back to this stitch here, when we go through it the second time, it comes off the needle, and we are inserting a zip to knit. So if you're used to grafting live stitches off two needles, what we're doing on this front needle um, is essentially the same. Don't worry too much about tension at this point. You don't want to be too tight. If you're, if you're loose, you can always uh, tighten things up later, but if things are too tight as you're grafting, it's, it's a lot harder to, to put excess or extra slack in it. Next one, come in as if to purl. Come around the back side of the stitch. Go, let it off the needle as if you were knitting, slipping as if to knit. Pull the yarn through. Now we're gonna come around the last one. And go through that one as if to knit. Okay, so you can see that the tension on that graft is all wonky, but we can even it out manually. And again, it's easier, it's always easier to take out excess slack than it is to try to put uh, slack into something. And then the final step will be to insert this uh, needle back down through the fabric so that we can fasten it off. Now, you might have tension issues as you're working back and forth. You can see that, that my tension is not great here, like these are sloppy and the ones below them 
uh, are, are really tight. So you can adjust it. If you go back down where you connected along the side, you can pull some of that out. And then there's the other half of that. And I can put it back in and I can redistribute things so that it um, becomes more even. And I can do that on both sides. So once the patch is done, you're done. So what we see is that there are seven uh, stitches of the dark green. Um, and I said I wanted a patch that was eight rows long. And this is the, the first row right here. And then we had seven rows of the dark green. And then when you look on the back side, you can see where those connections are. You can see where the hole is and you can see that things are secure around that hole. And again, if you want to tack things down with some thread or um, thin yarn, you could do that as well. I promised at the beginning of the video that I would show you a technique that allowed you to pick up the stitches without ending up with these twisted ones at the bottom. This requires that you have access to the back of the fabric. The first thing you want to do is thread some waste yarn along a, a row of stitches, just like we did uh, uh, along the top, to create a guideline. Then you're going to anchor your, your yarn tail just so, like we did before through the fabric, then go back down again. So that's just to keep the tail on the surface of the fabric so that it's not in the way. Uh, as you're trying to pick up stitches. Now you're going to come over and you're going to decide where this row of stitches is. So if we wanted to pick them up in the same line along here, this would be the last stitch that gets picked up across here. We want to bring the yarn needle up right next to that stitch so that it is up here on the surface of the fabric. So we have some yarn. This is the yarn tail. So this is the yarn, this is the working yarn that we're gonna be uh, working with right here. You're gonna take a crochet hook that's the same size as the needles that you're gonna be knitting with, and you're gonna go through the center of that first stitch above the guideline. You're gonna go right through the center, and then you're going to grab the yarn with your hook from above and pull it through. And then you're going to find the next stitch, insert it through the fabric, grab the yarn, and pull it through. So sometimes you won't be, it won't be easy to see over the top. You're going to have to do some things by feel. Uh, and that, this is why this is hard to do in a sock situation. It's very easy to get off the line that you're picking up. When you're using this technique, that's what, what the guide yarn is uh, there for. So now I've got all seven stitches on the needle. I can pull up on this to make sure any slack that's in behind comes onto the surface. And now I can transfer these stitches over to my yarn needle. You want to make sure that you check the way that these stitches are sitting on the needle, that you grab them as I showed with the crochet hook. If you're used to crocheting and you're used to hooking the yarn from underneath, that's going to create um, a stitch mount that is opposite of what you want. So now all of these stitches are on the needle and what you'll see is that that light green row below the stitches that are on the needle all look exactly alike. So that counts as the same row as this twisted row. So this counts as row one that you have worked because you've got those light green ones below the needle and you've got your dark green ones on the needle. I recently did a repair similar to the patch but not identical in this old sweater from the 1980s. You can see that video over here. Otherwise, you might be interested in this playlist of videos on fixing mistakes in your knitting. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.